sutra, the individual person with the diseased eyes, is the same as the people of that one country. He sees a circular reflections erroneously brought about by a disease of the seeing. The beings with a collective share see inauspicious things. In the midst of their karma of identical views arise pestilence and evils. Commentary The individual person with the diseased eyes is the same as the people of that one country. The one sick man and the population of that one country all have an empty phone seeing. He sees circular reflections erroneously brought about by a disease of the seeing. The one man sees circular reflections and all living beings of that country see all kinds of disease, of disasters and difficulties. It is all because of a defect that the empty falseness arises. The beings with a collective share see inauspicious things. The multitude of people in that one country with their collective share of karma see evil omens which are not seen at all in the neighboring country. In the midst of their karma of identical views arise pestilence and evils. The karmic obstacles, the evil conditions bring about the pestilence and evils because a lot of few false views can accumulate and become blocks and misfortunes. Sutra both are produced from a beginningless falsity in the scene. It is the same in the 3,000 continents of Jambu Thipa throughout the four great seas and in the Sahara world and throughout the ten directions. All countries that have outflows and all living beings are the enlightened, bright, wonderful mind without outflows. Because of the false, diseased conditions that are seen, heard, felt, and known, they mix and unite in false birth, mix and unite in false death. Commentary The false view of individual karma and the false view of the collective share. These two different kinds of karmic responses spoken of above are both are produced from a beginningless falsity in the scene. They all arise from ignorance, which from beginningless time onward has given rise to an empty false seeing. That is how these states come into being. Falsity in the scene is just the production of false views. Not to have any false views and to turn one's back on the dust and unite with enlightenment and get rid of false thinking is just the true mind. Why is it that you have a true mind but cannot make use of it? Why can't you be in control of things? It is because of false views. It is the same in the 3,000 continents of Jambu Fipa throughout the four great seas. The one country and one person spoken of above are compared to Jambu Fipa with its 3,000 continents and to the Sahara world, the world known as able to bear. Throughout the ten directions, all countries that have outflows, that is, all the countries in which the living beings have not ended birth and death, and all living beings are the enlightened, bright, wonderful mind without outflows. They are all the seeing, hearing, awareness, and knowing found within the enlightened, bright, wonderful mind without outflows. Because of the false, diseased conditions that are seen, heard, felt, and known, they mix and unite in false births, mix and unite in false death. All countries and living beings are the seeing, hearing, awareness, and knowing of empty false conditions. When the multitude of conditions mix and unite, they are falsely born. When the multitude of conditions mix and unite, they falsely die. Sutra, if you can leave far behind all conditions which mix and unite, and those which do not mix and unite, then you can also extinguish and cast out the causes of birth and death, and obtain perfect body, the nature which is neither produced nor extinguished. It is a pure, clear, basic mind, the everlasting fundamental enlightenment. Commentary Dependent retribution and proper retribution were discussed above. Dependent retribution refers to the mountains, the rivers, the great earths, to the houses, buildings, structures, and dwellings. Proper retribution refers to the human body. 
dependent retribution undergoes production, drowning, decay, and emptiness. Proper retribution undergoes birth, old age, sickness, and death. What is meant by production, drowning, decay, and emptiness? In this world, one development and one decline are called one compa. When the human lifespan reaches its peak of 84,000 years, then every 100 years, the average height decreases by one inch and the lifespan decreases by one year. This continues until the human lifespan reaches 10 years. Then it begins to increase again. Once again, every 100 years, the lifespan increases by one year and the average height increases by one inch. When the lifespan has increased to 84,000 years, that is called one compa. A thousand compas make one small compa. Twenty small compas make a middle compa. Four middle compas make a great compa. It takes twenty small compas for this world to come into being. It dwells for twenty small compas. It decays for twenty small compas and it is empty for twenty small compas. That is what is meant by production, drowning, decay, and emptiness. The 20 small compass of production make one middle compass. The 20 small compass of drowning make a middle compass. The 20 small compass of decay and the 20 small compass of emptiness each make one middle compass. So production, drowning, decay, and emptiness take four middle compass, which together make one great compass. In the proper retribution, there is birth, old age, sickness, and death. People take 20 years to grow up. They drown for 20 years, they are sick for 20 years, and during the last 20 years, they are preparing to die. There are two kinds of birth and death, share section birth and death, the birth and death of the body, and change birth and death. The term share section derives from the fact that each person has a certain share of years to live and each person has a certain appearance. For example, your height may be 5 feet 6 inches and mine may be 5 foot 9, while another person's height may be 3 feet. Every person has his own appearance. Ordinary people are subject to stress, section, birth and death. Those are the two vehicles, the Shravakas and Condition Enlightened Ones, have ended share section birth and death, but they are still subject to change birth and death. What is meant by change birth and death? There are thoughts flow on in continuous succession. Thought after thought is born, thought after thought dies. The cause of birth and death is ignorance and its conditions of karmic activity. This cause, ignorance, and this condition, karmic activity, mix and unite, and there is birth and death. Thus the Buddha said, if you can leave far behind all conditions which mix and unite, the mixing and unite of the conditions of ignorance and the karmic activity and those which do not mix and unite, and any connection with those which do not mix and unite, then you can also extinguish and cast out the causes of birth and death. In that way, you can extinguish and cast out shared section birth and death and continue or change birth and death, and obtain perfect body, the nature which is neither produced nor extinguished. When the cause of birth and death is extinguished and cast out, you obtain the wonderful fusion of Nirvana, the perfection of body whose nature is neither produced nor extinguished. It is the pure, clear, basic mind, the everlasting, fundamental enlightenment. It is also the basic mind and it is the fundamental enlightenment which dwells permanently and does not change. That is the self-nature. Mixing and Uniting Chapter 3 Sutra Ananda, although you have already realized that the wonderfully bright basic enlightenment does not by nature come from causes and conditions and is not by nature spontaneous, you have not yet understood that the enlightened source is produced neither from mixing and uniting nor from a lack of mixing and uniting. Commentary This passage is spoken to destroy the concept of mixing and uniting and of not mixing and uniting. Ananda still has doubts about it. 
So the Buddha expands this doctrine once again. He says once again that the same nature is just as it is. He, he first re reminds Ananda. Ananda, although you have already realized that the wonderfully bright basic enlightenment does not by nature come from causes and conditions and is not by nature spontaneous. Ananda, you understood this doctrine when it was explained before. The nature of wonderfully bright basic enlightenment does not belong to causes and conditions, nor does it belong to spontaneity. But you have not yet understood, he re-reminds uh, re him. You still haven't understood that the enlightened source is produced neither from mixing and uniting, nor from a lack of mixing and uniting. It does not come from not mixing and uniting either. Mixing and uniting means the mixing and uniting of ignorance and karmic consciousness. You may think it is produced from mixing and uniting, or perhaps from a lack of mixing and uniting, but both ideas are incorrect. The externalist sect, which preaches spontaneity, is called the God Self. Externalist sect. They have a self which is a God Self. What they think is this outside of the categories of appearances. In the eighth consciousness, there is a category of seeing, which is what they refer to as the God-Self, that changes it into the knowledge and views of an externalist sect. The externalist sect that preaches causes and conditions holds that there is no category of seeing beyond the categories of appearances. So they say that there is no self. There are only appearances, the division of appearances. There are also those who preach mixing and uniting. They say that when ignorance and karmic consciousness mix and unite, there is production and extinction. Characteristics that are subject to production and extinction and the nature which is not subject to production and extinction are all mixed up together. The two cannot be distinguished clearly. That is what they think, and so they preach mixing and uniting. Those who preach a lack of mixing and uniting think that the characteristics which are subject to production and extinction and the nature which is not subject to production and extinction are not the same and have nothing to do with one another. So they preach a lack of mixing and uniting. Those are the four kinds of ideas advocated by externalist sects. They are not the doctrines spoken by the Buddha. So now the Buddha, fearing that Ananda may be confused by these doctrines, explains the matter for him once again. He knows that Ananda still has doubts. It is just when there is a false that the truth is not separate from it. When there is the truth, the false is still there. It is not absent. It is just like a hand which has a back and a palm. Although the palm and the back are two, they are both right there. All you have to do is flip your hand over. It is the same with the characteristics which are subject to production and extinction and the nature which is not subject to production and extinction. These two are also one, just as affliction is body and birth and death are nirvana. It is the same kind of principle. People who study the Buddha Dharma should certainly investigate the Suragama Sutra and gain a thorough understanding of it. The Suragama Sutra is for bringing forth great wisdom. If you want to have right knowledge and right views and open great wisdom, you should certainly understand the Suragama Sutra. The Suragama Sutra breaks up the Devan and reveals the proper. It smashes all the heavenly demons in those of externalist sects and reveals the innate human capacity for right knowledge and right views. But when the Buddha Dharma is just about to become extinct, the very first sutra to vanish will be the Suragama Sutra. So if we wish to protect and maintain the proper Dharma, we should investigate the Suragama Sutra, come to understand the Suragama Sutra and protect the Suragama Sutra. When the Buddha is about to become extinct, with demons and strange ghosts will come in the world, people with devon knowledge and devon views. They will be wise to be ways of the world and will be endowed with powers of debate 
and keen intelligence. They will argue with uh, that the Suragama Sutra is spurious, inauthentic, and will tell people not to believe it. Why would they say the Suragama Sutra is spurious? Because the Suragama Sutra tells about all their faults. It discusses the kinds of Devan knowledge and Devan views. If the Suragama Sutra remains in the world, no one will believe their Devan views. If there is no Suragama Sutra, then their Devan knowledge and Devan views will succeed in confusing people. So they argue that the Suragama Sutra is spurious. This is the appearance of a Devan king. Those who study the Buddha Dharma should be particularly attentive to this point. They should be particularly careful not to be turned around by the Devon knowledge and Devon views of that Devon king. Do not allow him to change your thoughts and opinions. Does anyone have a, an opinion? Student, how does the Lankavatara Sutra compare to the Suragama Sutra? The Master, the Lankavatara Sutra discusses the doctrine of the Chan school. It is different from the Suragama Sutra. The Patriarch Bodhidharma used the Lankavatara Sutra as a basis when he transmitted the Chan school in China. The Suragama Sutra represents the genuine wisdom of the entirety of Buddhism. Student, is it possible for a Bodhisattva to appear in the form of a teacher of an externalist sect. The Master All Dhammas are the Buddha Dharma. None can be obtained. Do not be attached. If you are attached, it is not Buddha Dharma. If you are not attached, it is the Buddha Dharma. If you are attached, it is demonic Dharma. Student Another translation of the Suragama Sutra has been published. Is it basically correct? If not, what would you suggest that English-speaking people read? The Master, we are in the process of translating the Suragama Sutra now. As for the other translation you mentioned, it is correct in some places and incorrect in many other places. And it is not at all in accord with the basic intent of the Sutra. For instance, the translator says that the Westerners wouldn't like the Suragama Mantra and that they would not study the mantra. That is a complete mistake. He omits, omits the mantra from his translation. But if there hadn't been any Suragama mantra in the Suragama Sutra, then basically there wouldn't have been any reason to speak the Sutra. The importance of the Suragama Sutra is just to praise the Suragama mantra. The translator took it upon himself to dispense with the mantra that is in total discord with the purport of the Buddha's explanation of the Suragama Sutra. Student, I've heard it said that about the Buddha Sutra that the Buddha spoke all the, the other sutras of the other periods, all the other pe uh, teachings only has expedient means and that they were taught only to enable his disciples to know the Lotus Sutra and that in the Dharma ending age, all other sutras would lose their power. Only the Lotus Sutra would have real power. The Master, not bad. All sutras were spoken for the sake of the Lotus Sutra. But the Lotus Sutra was spoken in order to cause living beings to become Buddhas. The Suragama Sutra is for opening wisdom. The Lotus Sutra is for realizing Buddhahood. The Suragama Sutra is for breaking through all the heavenly demons and externalist sects. It can also be said that it is for the sake of the Lotus Sutra that the Suragama Sutra breaks through all the heavenly demons and externalist sects, that it is to cause people to cultivate the wonderful Dharma Lotus Flower Sutra. One studies the Dharma flower and cultivates the doors of practice explained in it in order to realize Buddhahood. However, at the very last, when the Dharma is about to become extinct, it is not the Lotus Sutra that will remain alive in the world. It will be the Amitabha Sutra. In the end, when the Buddha Dharma becomes extinct, only the Amitabha Sutra will remain and after it remains in the world for 100 years, it too will vanish. 
then only the one sentence, the great six syllable name Namo Amitabha for Namo Amitabha Buddha will remain. Sutra Ananda. Now I will once again make use of the mundane objects before you to question you. You now hold that false thoughts mix and unite with the causes and conditions of everything in the world and you wonder whether certification to body might arise from mixing and uniting. Commentary. Since the Buddha had not dealt with one of the major theories propounded by those of externalist sects, he suspected his small disciples might, might be wandering in that direction. So he says, Ananda, now I will once again make use of the mundane objects before you to question you. You now hold that false thoughts mix and unite with the causes and conditions of everything in the world, and you wonder whether certification to body might arise from mixing and uniting. You keep bringing up the theories of those externalists and comparing them to my drama. So now we will make a comparison for you. Sutra, accordingly, right now, does the wonderful pure seeing essence mix with light? Does it mix with darkness? Does it mix with emptiness? Or does it mix with solid objects? If it mixes with light, look further at the light. What places there? What place there in the light before you is combined with the seeing? If you can distinguish the characteristic of seeing, what does it look like in combination? Commentary, the Buddha questions Ananda. Accordingly, right now, does the wonderful pure seeing essence mix with light? Does it mix with darkness? Does it mix with emptiness? Or does it mix with solid objects? As you are at present, does your start the wonderful pure and clear seeing essence mix with light or darkness, with emptiness or solid objects? Which does it mix with? If it mixes with light, look further at the light. What place there in the light before you is combined with the seeing. If you say it mixes together with the light, then when you are looking at the light in front of you, tell me which part of it is the seeing. Point it out to me which place is mixed and united with the seeing. If you can distinguish the characteristic of seeing, what does it look like in combination? If it is possible for you to determine the form and appearance of your seeing, if you can recognize it, what form and appearance does it have when it is mixed together with the light? For instance, if you combine red and white, the result is neither red nor white. When you combine your seeing and light, what does the end result look like? Sutra, if it is not the seeing, how can you see the light? If it is the seeing, how can the seeing see itself? Commentary, if it is not the seeing, how can you see the light? If it is the seeing, how can the seeing see itself? If you say you do see the light and that it is the seeing, then it must be that you are seeing your seeing. How can the seeing see itself? How can you do that? What's your method? Once again, Ananda has to think over the doctrine. Sutra. If it is certain that the thing is complete, what room will there be for it to mix with the light? If the light is complete, it cannot unite and mix with the thing. Commentary. If it is certain that the thing is complete, what room will there be for it to mix with the light? If you definitely know the thing to be complete and not deficient, neither lacking nor in excess. How can you combine it with light? If the light is complete, it cannot unite and mix with the thing. If you say the thing is not complete, but that the light is complete, the light should not combine with the thing. If it is neither lacking nor in excess, it will not be able to admit other things. Sutra, if thing is different from light, then both the nature and the light lose their identity when they combine. Since the combination results in the loss of the light and the nature, it is meaningless to say it mixes with light. The same principle applies to its mixing with the darkness, with emptiness, or with solid objects. 
Commentary, if thing is different from light, then both the nature and the light lose their identity when they combine. If you say that the thing and also and the light are two different things, then it follows that they would lose their original characteristics if they were mixed together. The identity of the thing nature and the identity of the light, the basic nature of the light would both be lost. Since the combination results in the loss of the light and the nature, it is meaningless to say it mixes with light. So I say that there is no such thing as a mixing and uniting of just seeing with the light. To say they do mix and unite has no basis in principle. The same principle applies to its mixing with darkness, with emptiness, or with solid objects. The doctrine that the thing cannot mix with light can be applied to the pro proposition that it can mix with darkness, emptiness, or solid objects. It cannot mix with them. How can you say that certification to body arises from mixing and uniting? This is a mistake. Earlier, Ananda had wondered whether the thing is based on causes and conditions. The Buddha broke up this idea. Now he had decided that the thing is the result of mixing and uniting. Step by step, the Buddha has broken up Ananda's confusion. As soon as the Buddha breaks up one kind of confusion, Ananda gets involved in another kind of confusion. He has still not found the genuine doctrine. The Buddha said that all living beings have the Buddha nature and that all can become Buddhas. Some people hear that and go insane and they say, Ah, I am a Buddha. Everyone is a Buddha. Why don't they say that everyone is a demonic ghost? They say everyone is a Buddha. If everyone is a Buddha, then have you become a Buddha? The Buddha has three bodies, four kinds of wisdom, five eyes, and six spiritual penetrations. How many bodies do you have? The Buddha has a pure and clear Dharma body, the perfect full reward body, and millions of transformation bodies. How many bodies do you have? The Buddha has the great perfect mirror wisdom, the fair and impartial wisdom of the nature, the wonderful contemplating and investigating wisdom, and the wisdom that accomplishes what must be done. Four kinds of wisdom. How much wisdom do you have? The Buddha has five eyes, the Buddha eye, the Dharma eye, the wisdom eye, the flesh eye, and the heavenly eye. How many eyes do you have? You don't have a single eye. You haven't opened a single eye and yet you say, oh, I am a Buddha. What Buddha are you? Buddha have names. What is the name of your Buddha? I'm just Buddha, you say. If you don't even have a name, what kind of Buddha are you? Buddhas have names too, and there is no nameless Buddha. So to go around saying, everybody is Buddha, is to be someone who has gone insane. Yes, everyone is indeed Buddha, but you must practice the Buddha drama. After sitting for six years in the Himalayas under the Bodhi tree, he saw a star one evening and awakened to the way. That is the work Shakyamuni Buddha did to become a Buddha. But you do as you please from morning till night. If you like to drink, you go out drink. If you feel like smoking, you pull out a cigarette. If you are in a mood for a movie, you go see one. If you like dancing, you go dancing. And then you go home and accompany your wife to bed. And that's a Buddha. That's a realized Buddha. Ah, oh, too easy. So, take a look at how much distress and difficulty the Buddha endured to realize Buddhahood. And all you do all day is lie in bed and sit around the house. One need not speak of six years in the Himalayas. You haven't even sat three for six days. Sat there for six days. If you could sit there in a state of unmoving suchness for six days, I would consider you a Buddha. But you haven't even sat for six hours, and yet you say of yourself that you have realized Buddhahood. How could that not be called upside down? Ananda may be upside down, but that viewpoint is even more upside down than Ananda's. So I call such people demon kings. From now on, 
When you meet people like that, you may also call them demon kings.